What's up, guys? Jay's Two Cents here, and uh, we just kind of realized we forgot to do a React series in August. At least I thought we did, but we didn't. So I figured, because of the fact that I've been live streaming once again over on a different platform that rhymes with itch, because I'm not technically allowed to tell you guys anything about it, but um, YouTube rules, stupid rules. Anyway, I figured, why not this time we just go ahead and kind of take a look at your guys' live streaming setups. It's funny because people think to have a good live stream setup, you have to have some big old studio and dedicated spaces and all that sort of stuff. And although that does help, we're gonna see a wide range of setups in this one here. Um, and we'll kind of go along with it and react to it with you guys. But first, it's time to pay some bills. Crucial's new external SSDs are a must have for any tech or PC enthusiast. The Crucial X6 offers read speeds of up to 800 megabytes per second and available in sizes from 500 gigabytes to four terabytes of storage space, while the X8 offers extreme speeds over one gigabyte per second and up to two terabytes capacity. External SSDs are a great way to back up important files and documents, store game libraries, and make moving items between PCs quick and easy. To learn more about the X6 and X8 portable SSDs from Crucial, follow the link in the description below. So if you guys wanna be a part of this, remember, be following on Twitter. Twitter is where we find it easiest for us to do a hashtag. You guys can respond to the hashtag. We can go in and look at the hashtag and find the pictures and then put in there the ones that we want. So we're gonna go ahead and kick this off with uh, Dead Again TV. He sends us several photos here and he says, seems this month may be my time in the sun. Finally finished this system about a month ago, but missed the last video React's uh, submission. Uh, anyway, Rex listed screen cap from my Twitch page. Hopefully Twitter image compression doesn't kill it. All right, so first and foremost, I was attracted to the guitars. I like guitars, I've been playing guitar. But you can see he's clearly got himself kind of set up in a corner here. The guitars are not even on camera. Maybe one of them back here is. But this is clearly a, a, a simple setup. And now, I didn't say cheap, I said simple. And the reason why I'm saying it's not cheap is we've obviously got a stream deck there on the right side underneath this panel. Um, he's got what looks like a Corsair 4000D airflow in there, all water-cooled, the Logitech wireless keyboard and mouse. Got a GoXLR, that's a $500 unit right there. A Shure SM7B microphone. So again, not cheap, but definitely simple. Black desk, not a bunch of crap everywhere. He's got one key light, which is set to, thank you for setting that to a warm color. We can even see on a, a monitor here how warm that color is. Too many people go with like, hyper white or like 5,000K or 6,400K or something like that, which make them look like zombies on their, on their streams. But it's extremely simple. I like the color combo. I, I'm a huge fan of Vaporwave. I've got Vaporwave in my room. Next here, there's a picture of his setup. This is clearly an RTX 30 series card, a Founders Edition card, as you can see right there. It's got a, one of the EK water blocks that have the fittings that come out the back. So here's a, a closer look at his pump. See, this kind of worked out well, where he just is able to do a little 90 right up into the graphics card. He's got some custom cables here for the 12 pin, which is kind of rare to find these days, but the companies out there do make them. In terms of specs, you can see you listen to them all right here. You can pause the video and read them all if you want. We'll kind of go over the main things. It's a 5000D airflow, not a 4000D. It's a 5950X, so it's the highest end Ryzen CPU that you can get before going into Threadripper territory. An X570 ROG board, an RTX 3090 Founders Edition card, so clearly enough graphics card to end deck and code and game and live stream and all that on a single card. Because he's using an AMD CPU, he does not have an iGPU, so he can't use internal graphics on a chip like you could on Intel to be your dedicated encoder. So he's more than likely using either dedicated cores to do his rendering with software encoding, or he's gonna be going uh, and using the NVEC encoder. If I had to have any sort of critique here, the Rode PSA 1 Studio Boom, it's the same one I have at home, it's noisy. We are a huge fan of the Gatorworks. We use Gatorworks here at the studio for our podcast. You can, you can wiggle them all around. They don't make any hinge noise whatsoever. Nothing makes it into the SM7Bs, which are the same mics that we use here. Um, mismatched panels. It looks to me like he has enough room here to go with a little bigger panel if he wanted. This looks like it's some sort of an external style panel, which is why, uh, like, a, like a portable panel, which is why he's got them coming out the side right here. looks like it's USB powered and then he's got his input. But as someone that's using a single panel at home, I have to use a laptop exactly like this one, off to the side to monitor my chat and be in my moderator dashboard and stuff because of the fact that I only have a single panel set up at home, which is why I'm gonna be redoing my live stream set up at home now that I'm live streaming again. You guys can stay tuned for some videos on that. But anyway, overall I wanted to start off with that one because it was so clean and I thought it looked really good. So now we're gonna kick it off over here with Zios. He says, what do you think of my babe? Smiley face. So it's a 4000X MSI B550 Ryzen 5800X, 32 gigs of RAM. So this one here is one that I wanted to talk about specifically the next steps. 
He's done good cable management here. He's got a, a sleeve, which looks like it needs a little more slack though, so that it could run straight down behind the, the tower rather than being shown right there. It's got a headphone stand. He's got his keyboard and mouse. He's got a nice tower. He's got a vertical monitor here, probably so we can better easily keep track of chat and other things happening. He's got a key light. This room probably has a lot of reverb. I can't see what's going on behind him, but I can tell you that the wall he's talking into is in a corner and there's probably gonna be a lot of reverb in this particular setup. Because it's on the side, he's gonna pull it in from the side, which looks like he's set up for side address. Remember, the blue Yeti is a side address mic. People like to talk into the top of it. That's not how it's set up, it's a side address. It looks like he's set up that way, only his pop filter is kind of towards the top, which is making me a little bit curious as to what end he's, is he talking more diagonally from the top. Anyway, speak directly into the side of the blue Yeti on cardioid if you want the best sound. But you need bass traps, you need some sort of reflection killer here. Because what you're doing is you're talking right into the wall, it's bouncing in that corner, it's gonna make its way back to your microphone, and even though cardioid is really good at reducing reverb, it's going to bounce around the room. You've got hard floors, no bass traps. Bass traps are those wedge style foams that go in the corner. The corner is where you stop reverb in a stream setup, not the flat panels on the wall in front of you. That is to stop reflection and many of the, the high-pitched kind of a, a bathroom pitch, but the actual reverb, most of it is coming from corners because that's where it is bouncing the most. Bass traps right here and on the walls behind you would be a minimum for this. But this looks like it's a good start. You, you, you don't have a whole lot going on here in terms of um, lighting, which is perfectly fine. You've got your key light, that's all you sort of care about. And then again, you need some stuff on the walls. Probably to the right of your setup over here, I would put one of those flat panels. You get a cheap one off of Amazon or something, like a two by four panel that's designed to be a sound trap, and then bass traps in the corner, and then one directly behind and above your setup. That would be my recommendation regarding audio. I know you didn't ask for it, but at some point you're probably gonna notice this sounds reverby, and that's how you're gonna fix it. All right, so on the front line, he says, here's my Halloween themed setup for streaming in VR. I stream for Turborilla games, uh, Mad Skills, MX and BMX. I use an Elgato green screen and have five others for when I do sim racing to cover the floor. Wow, for my cockpit. So he puts green screens all over the place so that you can't see anything behind him, which I think is kind of sad. This is clearly like a loft or an attic or something like that where he's just dedicated this to gaming. He's got his one-up console uh, or um, cabinets over here for Pac-Man, Rampage, Street Fighter, <laughs> what is that, Galaga? Wow, okay, so he's going old school. The horror themed PC build is so funny because I've been streaming Phasmophobia. People were like, you should do a horror theme. And I was like, how would I actually integrate that? I think he did a good job here. He's clearly a Myers fan, although I would have been more of a Voorhees fan, you know? We know. I'm not being a contrarian. I like Myers, I like Kruger, but Voorhees has always been my guy. Maybe because he's just big and misunderstood, bullied, I don't know. But I think it turned out pretty neat here. I like this setup. He's got a little tombstone there, which probably is 3D printed or something. I like the way he just took his printer and made little clippings to look like newspaper clippings and then printed them out to look like a license plate. He's trying to get my attention with the whole Captain J there, excuse me, Admiral J. Let's get that straight. Although I'm the least decorated Admiral in Navy history. Oh, yeah. I mean, they could have given me some that. ribbons, right? I, I mean. <laughs> You're like a new Admiral. Honorary Admiral. Yeah. <laughs> Sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't see what's going on behind him, but his key lights um, are, are actual umbrellas, which are reflector umbrellas, which you would see more in a photography studio than, than any sort, sort of video. Um, so his setup here is a 7700K with an RTX 2080. He needs an upgrade. You know how many people would kill if you were 2080 right now? <laughs> yeah, so you can see behind him, actually, is this window. So he does green screens and a dog. He does green screens to uh, get all that blocked out. I think it's a good setup. I like the setup. I just mostly wanted to show off Admiral J. All right, so here we go. We're looking at Lava's setup now. This is one that like caught my attention. Look, Vaporwave is already the quickest way to catch my attention. It's my favorite combo. But this one looks like, you know those, those, those Synthwave live streaming channels on YouTube that just play like lo-fi wave and stuff and they always have a cool background picture? This like looks like that background, only it's his actual setup. He's clearly got one of these triangular like roofs. So this is probably an attic. Things we don't have in, at least here in California, we don't have attics like this that we can use, and I'm jealous because these just look cool. Uh, I like his setup here. He's got, these appear to be LEDs in a tube, which is pretty neat. And he's got LEDs coming around the edge right there. Base traps would be very, very difficult to do in a room like this because of the fact that there's no actual 90 degree corners. I mean, these are technically 90 degree, but I wouldn't even begin to know how to soundproof, not soundproof, excuse me, reverb proof a room like this because of the shape. 
But I just like the fact that he has his racing sim over here to the side, got icons galore, but a really nice setup here with, again, a Go XLR, the extra large Elgato Stream Deck, uh, Shure SM7B with a Gatorworks arm, so I'm, I don't think he listed that as Gatorworks, but I can identify it from here. It looks like Gatorworks. It's borderline busy, but I believe everything here is functional. It's almost like appropriately busy, right? Yeah, so he's got a key light over here. Because the thing is, if you have this much room lighting, you're gonna look like the lighting of your room if you don't key light yourself. I do have a little bit of a complaint though about these bundles of wires that show over here. Can't do much about that, but beautiful setup. I wish I could see what it looks like behind him. Because if he put this much effort into what he sees, what does the stream see? And that's one of the things that it seems like people didn't really give us in any of these was, what does your audience see? Because there's in front of camera and behind camera. And anything you see facing the camera is behind camera. So I'm kind of curious as to what that looks like. But Lava, that's a, that's a beautiful setup. I like it. Could use a little cable management, but I'll let that one slide. All right, this is Andy the Labs. This is my current setup as modeled by Savage Geese and my regular episode setup. I don't have a fill to help and Andy and Abby lack opposable thumbs. First things first, this little cubby part of the room clearly is a, a motion sim. So this rig has motion, which probably not a ton because of the way everything's wired up. I'm assuming it's not the kind that swing and go around and it costs $50,000. This probably has, you know, can bump and, and just tilt, which is fine. Um, the cable management on here is a bit of a big oof, but then again, they're clearly live streaming from this setup. Um, there's an Elgato Stream Deck right here, right to the left of his. This is the Fanatec direct drive, the, the new direct drive, I believe. It might still be a bell drive, but. So you can see from this angle right here, more of what they're seeing. So again, there's the XL X, uh, Elgato. They've got uh, a big, not sure if that's a BFGD, might be a TV. Um, you can see they got their stream panel over here. I like this though. This is their, their PC building like live stream area here. So they've got this big white screen back here, a down light with an aperture light. This looks like a, a 100D or something like that maybe. They've got a mini crane on a dolly tripod that has a, a camera, so they can point the camera down to get a, a bird's eye view of what's happening. And then she's obviously watching this panel right here to see what the camera sees. So clearly they do like live streaming of computer builds and stuff like that. So I like the fact that they've got a computer build streaming area and then their, their sim rig streaming area. Two times uh, A7S3s plus aperture and lupo lights. Motion control system by Edelkrone. It's a MoCo system? I'm jealous now. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Dude. Okay, a little bajark, bajarky, little jarky. Bjarky? Little bjarky. Bjark? Bjarky? I mean, if, if FJ could be Fjord, is that bjarky? Okay, so at first I was like, this is not a live streaming setup. There's no camera. But there's clearly a microphone here. Um, I don't know, I don't recognize this arm. I don't recognize this microphone. He didn't give me any information. It's the only picture we got. But I wanted to show you guys some creative uses of materials here. First of all, the iconic countertop from Ikea with Alex drawers. That's, that's what my setup is. That's what like 90% of the YouTuber setups are. It's simple, it's easy, it's not cheap, but it's spacious. They made a framed backboard with what looks like wood flooring that is a very close match to the desktop or the tabletop, which gave them a way to mount their monitors without having to drill holes in the wall. If you live in an apartment or you live in a rental home, you're not gonna go drilling into walls. Or even if you just are scared to do it yourself or you have a spouse or a girlfriend or a significant other that just doesn't want you to drill holes in the wall, then this is a very good alternative. Because what they also built here was a, was a blocking, a block off plate that hides their, their particular tower under the desk. Now this would never work for me. I'm six foot four, and that's this tall in UK and Euro units, but I would never be able to sit under this desk without smashing my knees through that. Phil could, I can't. So I thought it was a neat way to hide the system. What I'm really curious about here though, where is it getting air from? Based on the backboard here, it looks like this is very flush to the wall probably an inch or so away maybe to, to for the mounts and the cables to go through the back. I can see that based on how pulled forward these Alex drawers are, that with the drawers pulled as far forward as they are, there's probably only a few inches of air gap between the drawers to pull in air, right? So this computer is gonna have to pull in, this is the intake fan, so they're gonna have to pull it in all the way from the right of those drawers. And then the exhaust 
it's gonna have to push it all the way out here. So you've got this kind of a cross flow happening behind the desk. I'm really curious as to what the cooling in the system is like, just because of the amount of volume and distance it's having to actually push the air and pull the air in, and how big of a gap there is behind there. But it's very creative use of materials. But this is a cable channel that goes all the way around, comes down here, and then you can see it comes back off to the right, and there's his plugs right there, which are really high. It's actually pretty high for power plugs, it's interesting. All right, so this is from Malibu D. You know, it's kind of interesting. Phil and I have this, we kind of agree that it's, it's weird when people put brands as desktops. I don't, I mean, why advertise for free, right? Did you pay for the stuff? Then they should be paying you something for putting their logo there. That's the way I feel about it. But whatever, I digress. So we've got a lot of RGB happening here, Vaporwave, but actually not a lot. So we clearly have some blue ambient lights somewhere. I can't tell where they're shining from. They're off camera. He's got his desk lights on the edge, which is very standard. Uh, which is clearly set to pink right now. And then he's got a key light here, key light here. These are Elgato lights. A ring light around his camera. So I feel like he almost has too much key light, if you will. The ring light is designed to shine directly in front of the lens, right? It, it gets the, the, the light and the lens on the exact same focal point. So these panels over here, I'm afraid if you have too much light, I can't see what your setup is. I, I, you didn't give me a screenshot of what it looks like when you're streaming, but they all appear to be the same brightness which means if you get rid of all the shadows on your face, faces look weird without natural shadow giving you curvature. Like It's like looking at a sphere with a light from the side. You like to see the light wrap around it. If you just hit it from all angles, that sphere turns into a circle and then it just looks flat and unflattering. And the same thing happens for lighting here. I feel like we should do a whole video about how to properly light a scene, especially something like live streaming. I love the way it looks. Even the, even the curtains, like I feel like sort of add to this theme a little bit. I do like that you have sound panels here that are just kind of, they're hexagons and just sort of in a random pattern. At least they're in the corner where you're talking. All right, so this is uh, Sila Treya. This one, look, we had to keep it real and we had to show that there are struggles. Struggles are real. So he says, I can't say to, can't wait to see what you think of this. Webcam and the microphone, uh, and the mic is an Xbox 360 Connect. So the quality on that is already, <laughs> Uh, mainstream, our main system is a Dell XPS 8940 with a Core i7 and an RTX 3070. He's using a switch box to prop up his monitor. Here's that, that Dell XPS system. Here's his Kinect sitting on top of a headphone case. <laughs> He's got a VESA mount going to an Acer Aspire AO, AO Happy with Grandma Intel Doyle. Atom. You can't forget the Grandma Doily mount though. The I, was, mount. <laughs> I was getting there. I love the fact that it's rubber band or yarn stringed or something <laughs> to it using Grandma's Doily to keep it from being scratched. Dude, it's so good. This is peak second monitor. This is the kind of person that knows everything still has a use, mm -hmm. which is awesome to see. But it's like, he's got a 3070 in this. So you know, as long as the CPU isn't complete garbage, this is a fully capable gaming system and fully capable at, at live streaming with the, uh, with the NVEC encoder if he's not playing anything super demanding or uses a lot of RTX or Tensor cores. But I just thought this was funny that he VESA mounted the Acer Aspire AO Happy with an Intel Atom and one gigabyte of RAM. <laughs> he would have to use a chat pop out because I don't think he could actually yeah, decode the, the stream yeah and have chat keep up without being laggy. I didn't even think about it, you're right. You'd have to chat pop out. And then minimize. Minimize the stream or pause it, so that way it's not processing. Yeah. And these guys have Nintendo Switch right here. It makes me wonder if he live streams Nintendo Switch at all. But that, I mean, I cannot yeah, imagine. <laughs> dude, his mic is the Xbox Connect. What does that sound like? All right, CJ Slaughter. What do I feel like we've had that name before on here? CJ's Laughter. <laughs> CJ's laughter, all right. Um, gaming laptop. Wait, is he gaming on the laptop? He's gaming on the laptop and capturing on the desktop. Because look, he's got an i7 7700HQ, 32 gigabytes of crucial DDR4 2400, and a GTX 1070. I'm surprised that the laptop 1070 is faster than the 980, uh, 980 FE. It might not be. But it's an interesting setup here. Yeah. I mean, it wouldn't take much to update that tower to be able to be both a gaming system and a streaming system. And then you could you could lose the laptop as your gaming system entirely and use it as a stream capture system. What do you think, like a CPU and like a 980 Ti used or something to update that? Yeah, update the BIOS on his motherboard. He could probably run a 2000 series. Yeah. And a 2000 series is a huge jump up from a from the 1000 series Ryzen, yeah. even though it's still it's it's still not the Zen 2. Yeah, just get yourself a decent graphics card, you know? I mean, 
No, it's like I said, 980 yeah. used or something. I'd, I'd be a, you know, you can find that. For In me. a perfect world, you could, you would, you would update your graphics card to something like a 2070 versus that 980, or even, dude, a 2070. Because remember, a 1070 laptop GPU is more like a 1050 Ti desktop, maybe a. 1060. They fool you with the naming. Nvidia specifically fools you with the naming and thinking it's a better graphics card than it is. A CPU, a BIOS update, a CPU upgrade, and a GPU upgrade, and then your tower is perfectly fine to do it all for you. And then you, like I said, you could then just use an HDMI capture device into the laptop and let that be your stream system. Uh, interesting setup. I, I, I think he should chime in and respond to his own tweet on the actual what's connected to what, and then which panel does he officially game on. So there's, there's a lot happening here. Yeah. I like the setup, it's cool looking. I like the, the he, he made his own little L-shaped desk with two different desks here. It's a clean setup, wires are tucked, hot, hidden away. Um, he's got a drawer obviously for multi-keyboard setup. I like it, I really do. All right, this is D Dar Kai's ENF, what is that, Dar, D-A Kai, what? Earlier I said that the, uh, the setup was borderline busy. This one hurts my eyes, I don't know where to look. Um, W, T, and Phil's really hoping there's an F over here. I don't see any pink glow, so I think you're out of luck. I thought W was for weeb at first, just <laughs> based on all of this. I did, just I thought it was weeb. It, just, yeah, I just, I mean, I've never met a weeb that didn't like, Embrace just be like, theory. I'm a weeb. Yeah. My daughter included, she's a weeb. So this is far too much. I, I, I mean, I get that they bundled that, that's cool and all, but there's just, I don't know where to look. The monitor arm or the, the mic arm is kind of neat that it comes under the monitor, but that means you're far away from the mic. The cables bother me a lot. Everything bothers me on this one. You know, I'm a live and let live person, but when you ask me what I think, you can't get mad if I don't like it. And this is, this is just too much. I like the previous setup better, if you wanna know the truth. Cause it's less busy. It's less crap. There's just less crap everywhere. There's less cables in the way too. Yeah. And I'm not calling the, the anime stuff crap. I'm just, just crap, like cluttered everywhere. Yeah, I don't have any suggestions other than burn it. <laughs> I'm sorry, dark eyes. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just, that's not, this is not my cup of tea. It's just too cluttered. Um, I, I have, we've talked about this before. Anytime someone shows us a setup where they've got like some crazy design texture on a wall, whether it be like crazy lines everywhere or like textured panels, I, I get all like the heebie-jeebies out of that. And so this is like giving me those heebie-jeebies. I also feel like these types of setups make me feel like I can't move mm. around in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I sometimes- I, I feel like I would just, just be like, like clink, oh yeah. crap, I knocked it, oh sh I knocked it, oh <laughs> exactly. everything's falling. <laughs> and then you get into this chain reaction of knocking everything off the desk because you knocked one tiny thing. Yeah, this person can probably <laughs> navigate this in pitch black and not knock a damn oh, thing yeah. over yeah. because it's their setup. Yeah. This is definitely a function over form. I don't want it to seem like I'm ragging on you. I'm not, it's, I just, you submitted it for my opinion and unfortunately my opinion on this one is that it, it's just too much, too everywhere, too wires, too many things, too many colors. Also, Jay, for a trip, look which direction his computer inside his case is facing. Because I, I was, yeah, that's what I did too. I was like, wait a sec. That AI was on oh, the top. Oh, yeah, which okay. Which means he's rotated at 90, which means where does the... Yeah, that, I can't remember what case that is. Okay, I need to close that one. It's hurting my brain. <laughs> Our last one here is a Coda DA. He says, here's my setup, Corsair 5000X case, R uh, Asus RG Strix X570, 5800X, 5700, all the other stuff there you can pause and read. So, all right, I like that it's just blue. I like he's got, I mean, the cables definitely need some work. He needs a vacuum. Clearly he likes uh, Wargaming. We got some World of Warships here. We got World of Tanks over here. So this is one of those setups that are, that are kind of like iconic in the sense of, it's real common for people to use the Freddy. This is the Freddy desk from, from Ikea. Alex drawers as a pedestal. I did that in my daughter's room. I'm gonna do it in my youngest uh, daughter's PC setup when we build hers, cause she's got a desk that won't be big enough for her computer. Alex drawers, pedestal, done. Perfect way to get your PC up off your desk and give yourself some space. Clip your zip ties. Right here, clip your zip ties. <laughs> All right, so here's the inside of the setup here. That's a queen. Yeah, it looks nice. I, I do like the color scheme, obviously. Why is this blue Yeti shock mount backwards? Like going away from him. So you have that, the boom closer to your face than the mic is. That's interesting. So yeah, my recommendations, clean up these cables, clip these zip ties, flip your mic around the right way, 
on the shock mount, the way the mount's clo the mic's closer to you than the top of the mount. That's the part I feel like a lot of people just give up on when it comes to their setups, is cable management. So when it comes to cable management, I'm actually gonna be doing a video where I told you guys I'm redoing my monitor setup and, I, and I've got some cable routing I don't like with that gaming room I built at my home last year just before the pandemic. I'm probably gonna be redoing that whole desk space to make it flow a little better and work a little better when it comes to live streaming. So make sure you guys are subscribed so that you can see that. That way I can put that video up so you guys can then roast my setup to make it all fair. Anyway, if you guys wanna be a part of this, make sure you're following on Twitter. Um, again, that's where we do these particular hashtags so you guys can send us your setups. Why don't you uh, go and tell these folks what you think of their setup either in the comments down below or you can go directly to their Twitters because you saw their information on there so you guys can go and uh, have conversations about that. Be nice. You know, although some of my comments on here might have been borderline mean, it wasn't my intent. It's just my opinion but uh, at least try not to be super jerks about it down in the comments. But anyway, thanks for watching guys. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.